and we're live with Airplay 2020. So that was the lovely music of Joe Eisen starting us off with our theme music. Welcome to Airplay 2020. Tonight's guest is very special to me, a very good friend and a radical mover and shaker in the theater, Maria Olan. Hi, Maria. Hi. Hi, Connie. Hi, everybody. She's live from Greece, from Athens, and she, it's about midnight there, right? Yeah, it's midnight. Uh, the Cinderella, it's coming out. <laughs> yeah. We have her here tonight because she's an author, an actress, a director, and she has a new book out with her pad theory of perceptual acting and directing. And it's a pretty radical idea, but it makes sense. We call actors to be on the moment, yet know the future. And that's pretty wild when you think about it. Like, would you really go to work if you knew you were winning the lottery tomorrow? You know? I mean, think about it. But Maria has taken this on. I brought on my good friend, Jack Prince, theater director, award-winning New York director, who has been very well trained with some of the best in the industry, Andre Gregory at NYU. Jack, tell us a little bit about this book. What, 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 what made you get excited about it? Well, I actually uh, knew of Maria's work before I read the book. Um, uh, it's, it's a long story, but make it short. Uh, we started talking the last, well, actually now the spring of 2019, and uh, we found we had a lot uh, in common. And um, doing it the Greek way, where you're up till uh, all hours of the night and morning, we spent many hours uh, talking theater, and uh, we discovered that many of our experiences with theater and many of our theories uh, behind directing were uh, um were similar um so um you know during the most of that year and uh, coming into uh, 2020 uh we were talking about this and actually collaborating on um uh several projects when the uh covid hit us and uh, kind of shut everything down mm -hmm. so uh we still talk every day and uh, um uh, the uh, book, uh, Superconscious, is uh, a book I would recommend to everybody. It's, uh, it's something I, I try to give to my, uh, my students, and uh, I'm trying to get them to read it now. I, I bought several copies of them to, uh, to give out to my students. It's available. It uh, opens their eyes. I'm sorry. Uh, it's available right now, you said? Yes, it's available now. Uh, Maria, I think you have a bunch of copies of them. You can tell them it's on, uh, as I'm holding it up here, it's um, um, available it. on Amazon. And I would really suggest you buy the book because you go into a lot more detail than I'm going to have time for because I don't want to take away from Marie's time. Yeah, we have a very special workshop planned. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Jack. That You're was welcome. From New York. And we have two wonderful superstars, our Airplay superstars, Zoe Anastasia and Claude Isbell. Hi, Zoe. Hi, Claude. Hi. <laughs> they have come to work with Maria, doing some scene work, experiencing Maria's pad theory, and allowing you to walk into this whole experience of experimental theater, understanding what happens in a rehearsal, what happens in reality. So take it away, Maria. Thank you, Claude. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you, Tommy. Joy. Um, well, actually, uh, when we, uh, I would say that uh, 15 years ago, I consider myself to be an actor. Everything springs from the identity of the actor. And I use the word identity 
specifically because the whole book is dealing and the whole uh, pad Ethereum method has to do with the identities, the roles that we play in life and in the theater. Uh, that uh, the first, uh, it came out from the experience that I had 15, almost 70 years now uh, on stage when I was acting on a play by Tracy Letts that's called Bug. And here in Greece, it, we do something that uh, uh, actors, you know, they won't go through that thriller thing in, uh, in the state, in the United States. What is that? Uh, we don't, I mean, I, I was performing that, uh, that play for almost 216 uh, nights, shows. That was very, very, very tough. Um, usually this kind of place, you know, that, that difficult place in, in the States, they perform it up to 40 or 50 performances or they change. Um, anyhow, uh, in, I had an experience uh, after the second year, I had an experience, uh, out of body experience. And I had an experience that the fourth wall of the actor, uh, of me, uh, disappeared and in front of it as the light was coming up to me uh i became uh i i had uh the physical body disappeared and i became part of a whole uh which was just particles the only thing that i could sense i could deliver i could uh, deliver as a, as an experience something that was way beyond an experience was just particles so in that sense, I saw myself, I, I sensed myself as an observer uh, and watching me as a perfect uh, puppet performing the part perfectly. And I realized I was, I was thinking, I was performing, I was acting, I was sensing, I was, I was, everything was happening simultaneously. And in that sense, I was, uh, I was saying, talking to myself, my inner voice, I was on the, on the stage in the part, in the character, and I was talking to myself and saying, uh, as an observer, observer, what is happening? That was an experience that I, 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 it scared me to death. It scared me to death. It was so, my God, what is happening? And that was very, very weird because I'm not trained uh, in New York, the American Academy of Dramatic Art, and I'm not trained as a method actor and uh, actually method acting and all, all the study that I've done also with the self-knowledge as an actor, it gave me all the tools to perfectly uh, be in the moment and do everything we do as actors, right? So, uh, you know, that was a moment and I know that all of us have experienced something like that in a way or another, or I hope, I wish that all of us will will experience something that, like that, all actors, because I think that's, that, that's why we're doing theater. I have a part in the book where I say that I believe uh, when we started performing and acting, you know, a human being started performing and acting, not only for joy and to, to talk for the social situation as, as the Greeks, in, you know, they, they did, um, but also because it's our way to come closer to our to the next dimension. This has to do with the book. So actually, this was the experience, um, and uh, I hated the moments where this while I was acting, this idea came through and passed just like you know just a second of a second that I thought, "What are you doing now? Who are you kidding? Who are you? Are you the character?" Or are you Maria? Which identity are you carrying? What is your soul doing? Who are you? And actually what I've done the last 17 years is I've tried to answer to myself. I, I became the experiment. I to answer to myself, who am I? But on the other hand, as a Greek, I know that this is a panentropic philosophical question that it's not been answered because we think uh, three-dimensional uh, and we sense the fourth dimension with, with excuse me we don't sense we we know we we know about the fourth dimension but we cannot experience the fourth, the fourth dimension which is which is time and space um, 
so the journey started 15 years ago. A lot of study, a lot of research, a lot of work with my actors. As an, uh, as I, I, I needed to start working as a director in order to work with the actors and you know experiment this thing and figure out is this true or is it just me having just you know an aha moment and can I just communicate this to fellow actors to the artistic world um, and I discovered through the journey as I start as I started getting into the field into the field of all fields of self-awareness and self-actualization uh, NLP, language, um, uh, Buddhism, uh, Western and Eastern philosophies of, of who we are, uh, neuroscience, how our brain is working. I and all the pieces were there and something was missing and it drove me crazy. And then I started studying uh, quantum, science, uh, quantum physics the philosophy of it, because I'm not a scientist, so I do not understand the language of a scientist, but I'm a human being that understands the language, the philosophy of it. So uh, the puzzle came together and I saw the picture. And this picture is perceptual acting and directing. Um, and I come back, uh, this is an introduction for you, my loved ones, and for people who are listening to us. I came, uh, I, was, I wrote that, uh, first of all, I realized what Jim Carrey is saying, and I have it in the book. I realized why Jim Carrey is saying, I'm nobody, I'm nobody, I do not exist. And people say, wow, are you crazy? Is he crazy? No, he's not. And Pad Theory explains why, what it's happening through the process of being on stage and off stage. How, how does it mirror in your life and your life on stage, what is happening. And um, also uh, I, I realized why Daniel Day-Lewis left the stage when he viewed the, the, um, uh, the phantom of, uh, of Amlet's uh, uh, father in front of him, uh, why, why he was terrified, because it's a non, it's beyond three-dimensional understanding. It's something like a dream state uh, in order for us to understand it. But it's not, we can sense that, we can experience that. Uh, and to conclude my introduction, uh, I, I read that Stanislavski, uh, in the last year of his life, uh, he was trying to, he said that the, the actors won't, won't be, uh, that my system is, is not enough if the actors won't dive into the, uh, the world of consciousness. So he started uh, trying to figure out uh, what consciousness is all about. Uh, and he said that uh, the actor of the future is gonna be uh, the one who is gonna uh, welcome in his life what consciousness is all about. Not just the technique, not just philosophy, not just fragments of what is happening uh, as in art, but the whole picture. And he called that actor supraconscious actor. So I, I believe that from now on, we should be trained, we should uh, include uh, the new field of quantum, of the philosophy of quantum physics and neuroscience in our work as artists, artists uh, because I had this sense that art it's beyond art, it's also science. So I would love to, to see that art is becoming a sci science. Um, so that's the introduction. Uh, and now I wanna ask you, you had to go through the process of reading some chapters of the book. So uh, as I said, as uh, in the workshops and when I work with actors, I use the Socratic method, with it, which is, I have nothing to say, I know nothing. So I want you to tell me how, how did you uh, feel uh, and what was the first thought, you know, what, uh, what did you sense when you read a few, these few words you read from the book? That would help me a lot. 
So maybe Zoe, you're a woman, so you 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 will start first. More woman, <laughs> women start first. Okay. Um, yeah, please. No, thank you, Maria, for including me in this and being able to read your book. It's fascinating, and it's funny because what jumped out to me was kind of what you spoke about as your experience. Um, and I've been acting a long time, but I've only had very few moments where I've had this transcension of tra transcending moment of whether it's me or the character on stage and. Um, I did this play about Emmett Till and I had to be this voice of the conscience actually, the white woman who did nothing and watched this violence happen in the South. And something extraordinary happened to me on stage that I've never experienced before. And it was a, um, I got really ill. I started feeling really nauseous. Like I've never, and I up until this point in my career, I've never been so connected to this, you know, the physiological part of this character, I guess. Um, and I consider myself an in the moment um, actor. So I like reading your book and, and being in the moment is very important. But for some reason, this really stuck out to me. And I spent the majority of the play trying not to pass out. That was the, the whole role of my play. And I was sitting there going, is this me not feeling well? Is this the character not feeling well? And it would stop as soon as I got off stage and it would start as soon as I got on stage. And I was like, oh my goodness, like this is what it feels like to be to have what your book is talking about. And so when I was reading your book and, and, and dissecting like the frames and you talk about the frames and following the frames and like, but really not letting your part of yourself go, like yourself and the character you play are very much connected and can inform each other and you grow together. And like that suddenly brought back these images of, well, that's what it feels like to transcend this consciousness and you become one and when you finish you grow in the character you may do the same things every night over and over again but you're still growing and it's still informing you as me as zoe and it's still informing me as the character as i play it and i thought that was something very extraordinary to see written down in a book thank you now the man i, I also have <laughs> questions and you know we will yeah. Claude. Hi. <laughs> You're mute off, Claude. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, wow. I'm laughing because I just got in touch with something because um, Zoe just reminded me some. I think I had completely forgotten. Um, I didn't get nauseous. It was, a, it was a performance, but I got taller in my, in my whatever, my or whatever. I felt like I was seven feet tall. And walking around the stage, I was still me, but I had gone from like five nine to seven feet tall, and I was like part of the clouds or something. But I was still—it wasn't an out of body experience. Just I was taller, <laughs> and uh, I had completely forgotten that. So you you were talking, and then Zoe was talking, and I was like, oh my god, you know. And I just realized that um, I had wondered. I had tried to put a label or wondered what that was, but. I think it's a lot of what you're talking about in the book, you know, and I really like the book. I mean, we haven't talked much, uh, but I loved uh, you talk about Odysseus's journey, which is amazing. And, um, you know, another thing I realized too, is that I must confess, you know, you talked about Buddhism. I, you know, I, I studied some Zen Buddhism and then there's this whole thing of like, you know, if you meet the Buddha, kill him because not really killing him, but because you have a perception of the Buddha and you need to get rid of that because it's not going to be right reality. So I was, um, when I saw um, the book, you know, the title and I was reading, and I was like, oh, somebody else wants to replace, you know, Stanislavski and there's, everybody wants to come up with the new thing. And I, I realized after reading a while and what you were just talking about, it's just like the next step. It's not, you know, it's not replacing, it's just the next, you know, the next station on the train, you know, whatever. And I'm getting goosebumps. I mean, um, and um, I'm really realizing a lot of that just now, listening to you and then listening to Zoe, you know? And uh, so that completely turned my, my mind around to the, you know, the realization that, uh, also, like, you know, as I, I, you know, I mean, I've studied Native American spirituality, everything is connected, you know, and it's not replacing at all. It's just adding to, it's, it's you know, extending everything. So 
Um, yeah, no, I really want to thank you for the for inviting me to the workshop because it's been fantastic so far. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, uh, well, actually, uh, I, I'm a, I really, I really, I really uh, love uh, whatever Stanislavski, Adler, Meissner, Strasberg, um, Jura Hagen, and I, uh, and uh, I also work. Uh, uh, now the name doesn't come to me. Doesn't really matter. Uh, you can't go. I mean, if you don't have the tools seriously, you have nothing. Uh, and having nothing is so creates so much fear. So uh, we're scared, right? So uh, I was trying to figure out why, since I have all these tools, I have this uh, uh, small um, unanswered. Uh, questions as an actor and that drove me crazy because because I had the best tools in my hand right and then I had these experiences and uh, I'm a researcher you know I'm, I'm a crazy one <laughs> so I said no I, I, I gotta figure out it's a lifetime process it, it still is because I want to still work uh, bad with neuroscientists because I want to figure out what's happening in the brain of the actor when he trans when he makes a transition from being the part into be from being himself himself into the part uh, the character uh, in order to say a few things so we know we on that method is uh, introducing new concepts for actors based on the uh, absolute and only and a uh, beautiful work of the best uh, teach, uh, uh, teachers we had in the theater, which is the ones that we just uh, mentioned, right? This is the base, the base of it. And then Pat comes in and fills some gaps that I as an actor had and as a director, and I believe uh, some other actors also do, but then again, it also gives some new field of knowledge because back in the 50s, Stanislavski didn't have quantum physics. He, he didn't have the information we have today. We have all this information. You, we better do something with this information, right? We, we better create, we better make this knowledge and not only information. So uh, Bud is introducing uh, new concepts for the actors based on method acting. And that is uh, what's happening with the energy. Everything is energy. It's not the part. It's not the character. It's not the physical body. It's not even the. It's not even the uh, the script. Sorry, Connie. <laughs> you know, Sony Corico finger and all the playwrights. But it's not even that. Even for the ancient Greek theater and the big, big, huge plays, it's not even that. That is, that is just um, the the way to to transform what we use. The language is. Language and the five senses are the way that we communicate as human beings. And the sixth sense is beyond that, but language and the five senses. Um, so it introduces uh, the, what is the sixth sense, what is happening in the neuroplasticity of the brain, uh, how we use the brain as actors, what is the internal map of the actor, how, what is the language, what is the beliefs and the values that we have as human beings and how does this block us or unblock us in order to use the system value, to create the system value and a belief system of the character? Uh, uh, what is the body and the no body experience? As a, a Ulysses said uh, in Odyssea, uh, he became, uh, he got away from, uh, from uh, 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 what was his name now? And I'm Greek, I'm sorry guys, uh, the, from the um, Kiklopas, uh, when he got away from the cave, when he said that I'm nobody, when he had an identity and he was somebody, the ego was huge. He had a name, he was labeled. When he became nobody, nobody gave, gave him the freedom to be whoever he wanted. But if you take the information from, the, from science also, also fusing uh, the philosophy of ancient Greeks 
and the philosophy of of of, uh, of uh, people from uh, of Eastern uh, uh, civilization, and then you fuse all these things together, then you have a new blend of beautiful information that serves actors and the world. Why the world? Because it's not only for artists. The world also because what's happening on stage. Actually, what we're doing, uh, what we're doing, it's very um, heroic because we think that we are, we are, you know, getting into a character, but we're not. Actually, uh, we're coming closer to who we truly are, who we in real, who we are in reality, and not behind the an, an identity behind the identity of a parent, of a lover, of a beautiful, of a fat guy, of the ugly guy, of the mad guy, of the crazy woman, of the uh, rich, of the poor, all these are labels and identities. But what is, what is the truth behind the whole thing? What is the energetic fields? What is the vibration? What is the vibration that we have to synchronize? And then uh, I introduce the frames. The frames have to uh, have to do uh, 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 the, the the frames is like okay who are, who are we? We are born here. Everybody's been born in a moment in time. And then the, the, if we take this as a dot on the paper, right? And we put this moment the dot. This is double up and born on 9th of July 1971. That was a dot. Boom. Being back. Maria is coming out, right? Okay, and that was the next moment. My first movement, my first cry, second dot, third dot, fourth dot, blah, 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 blah. Infinite dots. And that dots create a line. Now, today, as I perceive my reality, which is a false understanding, of course, of who we are and what's happening in the world, right? Because as I said, we communicate through the five senses and language. So if I perceive, uh, if I, I understand with my linear understanding that now I'm, uh, I'm in Greece, in Athens, in my home, it's uh, 12 o'clock, I'm on uh, live stream, et cetera, et cetera. Then it's another moment and then I'm do, 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 and I'll die one day. Maria disappears. Okay, that's how I conceive and all people, we conceive ourselves of being, of who we are. The dots create a line in a very few words. That is explained in the book, right? The line continue, it's, uh, uh, exists before I was born and continues after my death. So the line is infinite. In the same sense, the line is infinite in um, what? What's the word? Vertical. Uh, vertical. Thank you. In ver in vertical ways. So if it's horizontal and vertical, then we create a whole black black thing. In that whole black thing is made that's serving the actors in very very few words now, right? It's serving. It's it's made from dots. So if now. I am this dot in my linear perception of who I am, then in a non, uh, in uh, beyond my fourth dimensional understanding and uh, whatever has to do with dimensions explained by the philosophy of quantum physics, which is in the book, then uh, holographically, I, I exist in all places. So I am infinite, possibilities, infinite, infinite, my soul, not I, as my, as an identity, as Maria, or, or as a character, or, or as infinite characters, I am a soul that, that is, um, that is uh, uh, vibrating in the whole black thing, the dots, and as an actor, Maria is choosing to synchronize myself with uh, another dot, with it, which is an, uh, one dot of the infinite possibilities that of existence. That's a frame. So 
It's not me, it's not the character. It's synchronization with the vibration of a frame of the of what existence is all about in a very few words. So what the actor has to do in order to conceive himself and free himself, herself from the, from the fear and the frustration and uh, the non, uh, non, sometimes we don't connect, we feel that we, we do not connect with the character. Well, that's a false, that's a false idea. Um, yeah. <laughs> Meaning though, you mean like, cause if you're in the moment, you will always connect. Uh, well, it, it, you're in the moment, but still you have to, what, uh, what uh, Buddhism as, uh, what Buddhism and the philosophy of Buddhism and, uh, uh, quantum physics, uh, Hell, uh, help us why is uh, because uh, they may they help us realize and conceive the idea that we are nobody we are nothing and we are we are nothing into everything so we are the whole and the whole it's nothing so simultaneously together um, simultaneously time. So in that, uh, if you conceive that idea and you work yourself with that idea, then you understand that everything is like, uh, it's just uh, a, a frag frag fragment of you, of uh, the experience we're having. Yeah. Uh, so in that, in that, in that idea, uh, us being on stage or us performing at home, being the identity of whatever, or people out there uh, acting, for example, uh, in their work environment, non-actors uh, uh, acting, they wanna uh, act in order to gain something. We're doing the same thing. It's just that we know we're doing it. So we are aware of it. And that's the amazing part. That's why it's also part, it's also uh, helping, uh, it's also useful for all, all people. Well, actually, I was very, very, very uh, lucky and uh, uh, very um, happy to, to get an endorsement to meet Deepak Chopra and get an endorsement from Deepak uh, and Minas Kafatos, of course, the astrophysics. Uh, and uh, Deepak uh, said something which is, uh, well, actually, let me read that because, because, well, he said, you know, that path is meditation in action, which is actually what I've tried to do, right? But he said, where are you, Deepak? Uh, Supraconscious is a very important book. Cultivation of witnessing awareness in method acting can awaken us to the fundamental reality of existence beyond the roles we play. This is meditation in action. Bravo. So, um, we said, because I see that it's almost 12.30 and I, I want us to read also to do the rehearsal of, uh, to do something, to work a scene from Connie's play, Jody in the Bardot. And I want us to do that. And I, I had Claude reading something from the book do you think we have the time to do it? Yeah, I think they're small little, it's up to you. We have two excerpts if you want us to read from the book first or I'm open. Uh, okay, Claude, can you read that part from the book then? Uh, what knowledge contributes to the actor's art? Hmm? Okay. Yeah. Okay. The universe is structured holographically. Every part of the hologram contains the information of the entire hologram. Our bodies, as modern biology testifies, are also holographically structured. To make things clear, a holographic image continues to hold all of the information, no matter how much it is cut up. Whereas an ordinary photograph will lose increasingly greater parts of the whole, the more it is divided. The same seems to hold true with every cell in our bodies. Inside the DNA in the nucleus of every cell, is very likely the entire code that is needed for our bodies to form. 
I, I'm not, I don't know how to pronounce uh, <laughs> the uh, author's names here, but um, anyway. By the same logic, many philosophers of science speculate that every human being is a holographic image derived from the cutting up of an initial image of the world. Like every holographic image, every human being has within the image of the whole undivided. In all likelihood, people are both holograms themselves and part of holograms. Every possible version of truth that is alive is also a holograph. Inside it exists all possible versions of truth. Out of all those infinite possibilities, people choose to experience the frame of their choices. That is, chooses to experience a possibility of who they are among the infinite ones that exist. The concept of frame will be analyzed in a subsequent chapter, depending on their convictions, the way they have been trained to think, their imagination, in short, their overall ability to expand. This imagination is the archive of all po possible holograms or else the matrix, connective tissue of all things. Which brings us to the actor. The actor chooses it out of this archive to synchronize himself or herself with the version of that occasion, which is what we call the character, the role, role's identity. In this manner, leaps onto the parallel version of himself. When the characteristics of yet one more self that pre-existed <laughs> exists and always will exist within himself or herself. He activates through the action of the physical body and the emotions in the way in which he has been trained to identify with the character. The more he tunes into that frequency, the greater the performance is, or what we mean when we say, you can't tell the actor apart from the role. It is then that the viewer lives through the actor and experiences emotions with him, which means you'll have to read the book to <laughs> find that out, okay? Okay, so, uh, so uh, also in the book, there are, there are a lot of exercises, I should say, that exercises and uh, visualizations and uh, a new, I'm introducing also the map, uh, the ethos map, which is the map of the 10 questions for the actor uh, working himself and herself as a human being, you know, as a personality growing and and for also the, the part, uh, the character. Uh, so, uh, there, well, actually, that, that's not something that I had in the book. Uh, it's not an exercise from the book, but I just thought that it's a way, you know, since we are now communicating only through one sense, actually, well, two senses, you know, uh, we're looking at each other and we are hearing each other. Awful. Well, anyway, <laughs> you know, whatever. Well, um, uh, I thought maybe you can read uh, of a part, a scene from from Josie the Bardot, uh, from this amazing, amazing friend of mine, Connie, which I love and respect more than soulmate uh, and uh, you can just uh, forget about the book the the, the the actual words forget about and just do this uh, breathe from the first chakra right from the sacral chakra breathe from there and as you as you inhale just sense a rainbow coming up the spine, going through the chakras, and you exhale from the, the third eye, and you just exhale, and the four, the exhalation takes the forms of the words, so you don't, don't care about the words, just take the form, even if you don't want to say a word, don't, don't say it, you know, it's not now in the rehearsal process, it's just an exercise, we're just gonna experiment with that, so as you do that, just view yourself and lighten the part of your of your sp uh, spinal and exhale through the third eye and let the rainbow enlighten your whole your whole physical body and beyond your physical body, right? And uh, forget about the rhythm, don't care about the rhythm, don't care about the words, just breathe and 
go through through that okay. enlighten your physical body through the rainbow of the colors of the chakra starting from the first chakra coming up to the third eye and make these circles and circles and circles go okay. wow look at the rain my mama used to say that a hard rain meant that the angels were sobbing something sad was going to happen or maybe it already did. Ouch, my head feels like a rotting melon. Jesus, why is it so soft? Feels like it's not even really my head. Strange. Okay, so I'm in a hospital. I need to leave. I need a drink or a Zoloft or a something. Out of here before they start asking me questions that I can't answer. So, okay, Josie girl, get your shit together, get dressed and get out. Huh, this feels funny. Like I'm still dreaming, certainly feels different, drunk but not drunk, like I have no control, my legs are so... Okay, now get your head together, time is ticking away, and you, young lady, you have a show tonight, you're back in the biz, remember? Headlining at Blue Lose tonight, you're lucky not everyone gets a second chance. Now come on, get your stuff and get out of here. What the, what the hell is going on out there? God, it looks like a time tunnel. Everything is lit up, electrified, illuminated, whatever this place is that isn't normal. I need to get out of here now. Just go, Josie, out the door, pass the rope, out of here. Don't be afraid, just go. This is not good. There has to be a way to get past those stupid ropes. Think, Josie, think. We can see people coming and going on the other side, so there must be a way for me to get through them. I wonder what it's, what it's doing in a hospital anyhow. It looks like a crowd control rope for a theater. Oh, wow, that's cool. My head stopped hurting. Oh, good. We can start your exit interview if your pain is complete. Jesus, who said that? It's me, Josephine. Josephine? Josephine Marie. Josephine Marie? That's what your grandfather called you when you were a little girl. No, retention lapse. The brain damage may have affected your memory. We have to wait till you regain your faculties. Brain damage? Your boyfriend hit you pretty hard. Freddy? Yes, he knocked you out. Knocked you so out so you couldn't, wouldn't survive the fire. Freddie wouldn't do that. I mean, he can be nasty, but hey, who are you anyway? And where are you? I hear you're- I'm your higher self, your inner voice, your guardian angel, your conscience, your spirit, your director. I only speak up during the critical points in your play where say you might not be able to think things and not through by yourself. In a play? In a manner of speaking. Look, this place, your voice, I mean, it sounds vaguely familiar, but I've got to tell you, I'm not putting it all together. It's okay. You're just waking up. Don't be alarmed. It's only a dramatic pause. A blackout, a light shift. The play of life never really stops. What do you look like? You sound really familiar. I don't really have a body right now, but neither do you. Think about yourself as a kid. Okay, I had long braided pigtails and always wore blue jean overalls. I had patches on the knees. Mm. My grandparents had a sun porch where they kept a yellow canary. What was its name? Butch. Butch was its name. And my grandfather would walk me to Zinn's corner store to get a big ice cream cone for a quarter. Nice. Sounds like your memory just rebooted. All right now, should we begin? Question number one. Wait, what are we doing? Your exit interview. What for? Your next assignment. You did say you wanted to get out of here, right? Can't I go back to my old life? I mean, I was just getting started again. You'd rather have a remake, a retake, when you can start fresh? Maybe even evolve a little. Wait, what? Evolve? Yes. You can evolve into a life that could have greater effect on the whole of humanity. Yes, that would depend on how you do on the exit interview. All right, all right, wait, no, it's not all right. Who are you and what the hell is going on? 
come on, you're freaking me out. Where are you? Better yet, where am I? The Bardo. We are in the Bardo, Josie. This is the place between your past life and your next life. Here we draw on lines of divine energy to create new stages and play new roles. Like an illustrator who uses lines to sketch a portrait or an actor who builds his character line by line. Every living being uses lines of thought captures the quintessential moments of past realities and present imaginations in order to fabricate future lives. That sounds cool. I've always wanted to be an actor. I mean, I sing and I love an audience, but memorizing all those lines. Great. I don't, and don't worry, lines come naturally if you stay focused. Okay, so question number one. What was the happiest memory of your life? Like, what do you mean by happiest? Like something that created joy, great joy in your being. Oh, okay, okay. I was in ninth grade and I got cast in the high school musical Annie as Annie. I got the lead. My neighbor Mary Jane Jones said I would never get even a part, let alone. She said ninth graders never get cast in the musical, so don't even try. I never expected the lead. I just wanted to sing. The sun will come up tomorrow. You know what I mean? Correct. You have answered the questions correctly. You will receive three golden points. Cool. What are the golden points for? Well, you need 10 to get to the next level. You saw the rope just beyond, it is the lobby. You saw all the people coming and going. They and look more like shadows to me. That's because they are. You can't see them and they can't see you because you are on a higher plane right now, on the operative level, a less, little less conscious. They moved about consumed by everyday activities. They don't concern themselves with the big picture, really, and that's okay. It will evolve eventually too, just not now. They were on lower plane, and so when they die, just they just hop off and on the subway. But creative souls like you, who have willfully gained a higher level of consciousness, end up here. Where exactly are we again? The Bardo, the place between life and life. What about death? What about death? I died, right? Yes. So... So what? Where did I go when I died? Oh, didn't we just go over this? No, I want to know what happens when you die. I just died. I think I deserve to know what happens, don't I? Sure. <sighs> then what happens when you die? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Oh, come on, something must have happened between... Nope, nothing. So my ex-boyfriend hit me on the head, I passed out and burned to death in a fire and then just ended up here. That's right. That's it? Yes. Nothing else? Nope. Think of it like scene change, a blackout. So now what? The exit interview. If you pass the consciousness test, you will be given the next level option where you can go create your next incarnation. You will be given a pass to enter the Bardo Theater where you will be able to write, direct and star in your next life. You mean I can choose who I'm going to be next? Yes, if you get 10 golden points, you'll be able to co-create with the divine energy from memories and imagination. And what if I don't get the 10 points? You will remain in the waiting room until you're needed for someone else's story, a supporting role. Okay, so I'm officially dead. We call it in transit. Death is not an end in self. I mean, seriously, how could it be? Wait, 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 wait. I thought this was a hospital. Didn't I die in the hospital? Well, it was a hospital when you arrived, huh? But now you're in the Bardo. Think of it as a way station just outside of the subway. The system of travel below ordinary reality that gets you from this life to the next. Here you can weigh the odds of whether or not you'd make it on a higher plane. Wait, what? This is not clear. I'm sorry. I'm getting confused again. I feel like, well, I don't know. I'm sorry for feeling like this, but... I mean, I'm usually very positive. No, no, it, it's okay. 
You feel like, feel like that because you feel like that. You don't have to be sorry. Here now, let me explain. Death is not, I shouldn't say, death is nothing, but everyone thinks it's some big thing because you have been conditioned to think that. You see, you don't leave your body completely for at least 72 hours. You are in the holding pattern right now. Here is where you are screened and tested to see what next dimension you are ready for. You've lived a fairly conscious life. You were always aware of other people, how they thought, felt. So you have earned this opportunity to increase your self-realization, co-create your next incarnation, if you really want to. Yes, yes I do. That's it, that's it, no? No, that's it? That's it. That, that's it, right? That was it. Wow, wow, wow. Bravo. We missed that, right? We missed that. I know. So I got to do it. So I, I chose that and I proposed that to do that because that has to do a lot with my work, right? And, um, I, but how did you feel with this? which is not an actual rehearsal, but how did you feel with that, uh, you know, note that you had to work with? I'll go first and give Zoe a break. Oh, no, yeah, okay. Um, not, um, <laughs> it was really, really strange because um, at first I couldn't, uh, <laughs> I was having a tr trouble relaxing and things from the day were popping into my head. and. I, I was trying to say it with no motion, always bored, but I couldn't do that either. And then after a while, I stopped fighting it and, you know, started becoming the character, you know, and then I was thinking, oh, no, that's not the way it's supposed to be done. And so I don't know. In some ways, I felt like I was doing what you were talking about. I was going back. I was, it was like a split personality between me and the character, you know. And by the end, I just didn't give a shit, which was good. You know, I like when I'm working with people, if I'm directing a scene, that's really, you know, people are not supposed to give a shit. I will wait until the end of the day when everybody's exhausted to shoot that scene, you know, because everybody's tired and they really don't give a shit. So if that makes any sense. But, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what about you, Zoe? Um, I tried really hard to like not let any of the words affect at all and sort of string it and take the note of what you said of like not, even not looking at punctuation, just feeling the breath go through and just say it and say it and say it. And I noticed how um, even just letting go of the, of what the actual words are saying doesn't let go of how you feel. So like if you start to evolve as, as the scene goes on, like you're, you're not actually, I wasn't conscious of the words coming out or even conscious of the words that I was reading, even though I know the scene, I didn't think about anything of that, but I still could feel the emotion of the scene, if that makes sense, or the emotion from Claude, even though we were both not, Mm -hmm. the character fully it was like it, that transcended all the words and it just brought out that what was inside versus what's written so we don't have a preconception I felt like you know like it was all who cares how it's said if the intonation is right if it's a question if it's not just get it out and I felt like that was very interesting because it was really in my body yeah well actually the, the world was just a, a smart a flavor of, of, of what we can do in order to figure out who we are, because if we know who we are, then we're supposed to know what we're doing, right? So that's a work in progress. So uh, working with uh, oneself and one's uh, soul and uh, mind uh, helps them to figure out, to come closer to who we are. So that then works for what the character is all about, etc., and what we've been talking for the last one hour so it's almost we're almost done i want to thank you very 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 much before before i want i want Claude to uh, i want zoe i'm sorry to to read uh, one part of the book so we will we'll, uh uh we'll finish for today i hope i see you guys in new york very very soon i don't i don't know what's happening what's gonna happen next in the world uh, um i don't know when the theaters are gonna open in new york I don't know uh, what's happening with, uh, you know, what's going to happen to the actors 
with our works and everything, but I do know that that is a great chance for us to dive into things we don't have the comfort to die to dive when we are in this crazy world out there and you know they throw us out there it's a good thing for you know inner work so that's a good thing and for truthful communication although we're in a this screen thing so i want to thank you both thank you and uh, Thank you guys, thank you. And thank Connie and thank Rachel and thank my dearest uh, Jack, yeah. And uh, let us uh, come to our to an end with a excerpt <laughs> from the book, right? That's right, okay. okay. My dear fellow human, seeker, actor, director, what we have is this moment in life as in the theater, the moment. It was such a moment when, as I slept, a force, a calling, an inspiration made me open my eyes wide. I stood up mechanically to try to preserve alive this thought I had dreamed, small or large, on a piece of paper. The theater is a state of hypnosis where the, where the truth is revealed to you as you are connected with the unconscious. And when you wake up every morning, you are disconnected from the plug as you put on the roles of conscious life. An idea is revealed to you and you desperately try to keep it awake keep it from passing, being forgotten, getting lost in the universe of the collective memory. Ideas such as this, already from childhood, add up and create the great ideal, the ideal that becomes the mask to which you cling, tightening your hold when life is turbulent and loosening it when the winds are favorable and the water still. That mask has sculpted out values and principles, which, depending on the craftsman, create the longed for ethos, a word whose meaning extends far beyond its archetypal connection with ancient Greek drama. American poet Maya Angelou said, I have learned that people may forget what you said, forget what you did, but they will never forget the way you made them feel. Since the dawn of humankind, theater has had, still has, and will continue to have a special place for the following basic reason, emotion. This book does not deal with emotion per se, but the energies, the actions, and the ways emo emotion is produced, its communication, and its decongestion. Awareness of the difference between sensations and emotions is a primary prerequisite for becoming an adult. This book does not deal with the established theatrical terms, rather it deconstructs and redefines them through data from new fields of knowledge. Speaking of emotions, we may claim that through the characters, actors impersonate, they, in fact, experience intense emotions, oftentimes larger than life. Actors are by nature courageous beings, who repeatedly risk being exposed through the revelatory great actions of the characters they portray, actions that create emotions that are earth shattering. They are not cowed by the process of discovery of their unexplored psyche. They desperately seek the mystery of their nature. When they succeed in this, they openly expose the findings, pulling viewers to the same frequency, the same state, transferring to them those great emotions that they do not dare experience in their personal lives or if they do, many times pass over in silence out of fear of the unknown. Every play in the history of humanity has been written as a mirror of the social becoming of every period and how this is experienced by the human beings of that time. However, the discourse of every work is not more important than the effect it creates. You may forget what you saw, but you will not forget how it made you feel. Works that cut across time are the ones that speak of human values across the board and reveal the greatness of human nature, what we call ethos, etymologically from the ancient Greek to signify habit and the self. Human beings seek to experience tragic emotions in order to discover ethos. In the distant future, perhaps at the time when the next humanity will emerge, at the time when emotion will be in tune with the ability to feel empathy and intelligence will include ethos as a primary awareness, Concord, peace, and love will be the basic values as the highest ideals connecting us all into an irreducible whole, the Olon. Empathy will be humanity's natural state and theater will perhaps become an important part of humanity's historical memory, a reminder of our origin and ways of exploring existence in the next dimension. Okay.
Thank you. Have a great night. You okay, too. Get some sleep. <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> Good, that was a good. That was good, though, huh?